QuickBooks Online 2022 payroll transaction using bank feeds. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125% currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page in the business view as compared to the accounting view. Changing to the accounting view is something you can do by going to the cog up top switch to the accounting view down below we will be toggling back between the two views either here or by jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view let's open up a few tabs that we can put reports in by going to the tab up top right clicking on it and duplicating it back to the tab up top right clicking and duplicating one more time tab up top right clicking and duplicating again as that is thinking we're going to jump back on over to the sample company file to see where the reports are located in the accounting view which is right here on the left hand side under reports jumping back to the business view to see where the reports are located we're in the second tab here the reports are going to be in the business overview area and then under the tab of reports I'm then going to be closing up the hamburger. It's still thinking to get to those reports, so the reports will show up here. There they are. There's the balance sheet. I told you they would, and they did. I was right. I'm going to go into the balance sheet. We're going to be changing the date range up top from 010121 to 123121 and run. And then tab to the right. And we're going to go into the business overview again, into the reports again, close up the hamburger and go into the P&L profit and loss, the income statement, and change the date range from 010121 to 123121 and run. One more time, go into the tab to the right, tab to the right. And we're going to go to the business overview again, go into the reports and close up the hamburger. This time I would like to type in the trial balance, the trusty trial balance and pick it up as well. And that's basically the balance sheet on top of the income statement. Let's do a range change from 010121 to 123121 and run. There we have it. So now we're going to go to the first tab and just think about the bank feeds that we had set up in prior presentations. If you're in the accounting view, that's going to be in the bookkeeping section and then in the transactions up top, banking being the first tab. If you were in the accounting transaction or accounting look and feel here, it's in the banking on the left hand side. Accountant view, I believe it's called is the term. I believe that's the term you're stumbling over and tripping on like a rake that just hits you in the face because you stepped on it. Okay, so anyways, we brought in this information directly from our financial institutions. They're in here in what we're calling the bank feed limbo. They have not yet been brought over to the promised land. That being the financial statements to be helping us out for the financial statements. We know that to bring them over, we need to add at the minimum the customer or the vendor and the account, the account being the main or minimum thing that we would need and we would want customer and vendor. Let's think about how the payroll role would fit into the system, keeping the same theme that we have here. That theme being that we want to first think about the easiest method. I'm jumping to the flow chart here and I want to think about how we can basically build our financial statements just on a completely automated system dependent on the bank feeds and then take steps away from that as we add more complexity go into a system where we're going to need some more data input other than the bank feeds sometimes because we want more internal controls sometimes because we want we not want or need a more accrual type basis so if you think about the payroll the first way that you could set up payroll is obviously to put payroll or run payroll through the quickbooks system so we can add the payroll to quickbooks i won't get into the details of that now but there's basically a few different tiers that you can run uh, within the payroll and turn payroll on which is an add-on type of feature which you would basically be paying for i do want to point out at this point in time that payroll is one of those things that you want to measure twice in my opinion and cut once would be the adage as opposed to tinkering with something until you get it correct because payroll uh, could be costly if you have to change it over and over the most likely place you're going to have problems with in terms of lawsuits or any kind of problems like that are your employees and payroll can be complicated to be switching from payroll company to company or the way you're calculating payroll from place to place. 
So I would recommend talking to someone independent like a CPA or your accountant who you're not planning on paying for specifically payroll to ask what kind of payroll you want to be set up and then go in and look into those options possibly purchasing payroll. One, you can purchase payroll through the QuickBooks system, which means it's gonna be calculated within QuickBooks. It's gonna basically help you to, to record the transactions, pay your employees, and then process the forms that need to be processed, including human resource forms and tax forms like the 941 quarterly, typically the 940 at the end of the year, the W-2s and the W-3s at the end of the year. Your other option is to get an external payroll provider to help you out, a company that just does payroll that's not related to QuickBooks or your company in particular, but who you are hiring as a payroll provider. The biggest ones out there typically are gonna be like an ADP or a Paychex. I'm not advertising them in particular. You could talk to, you know, there's many different payroll providers, but these are some of the larger type of payroll providers. In their case, they would be doing the payroll and helping you out to process the payroll, helping you out to do the specifics of the 941s, the 940, the, some of the human resource type of regulations, the reporting of the pay stub kind of information on their end. Those are your two general methods. Now, if you were to have the information over here in QuickBooks, let's add one more tab. I'm gonna right click on the tab to the left and duplicate it duplicating the tab if you were to run it within quickbooks you can go into the payroll on the left hand side and actually be processing uh, the payroll you can set up the payroll which is typically the most consuming time consuming component and then you can process the payroll the general idea when you process the payroll or the impact that would be on the financial statements if i jump back on to the balance sheet and income statement it's a little bit more complex remember that payroll if it was just a standard transaction like you're paying for any other expense account, it would be a decrease to the cash account and the other side would simply be going to an expense called payroll expense. But payroll is way too complicated to, for that because we got withholdings on, in, at least in the United States for uh, federal taxes, state taxes, possibly other benefits that we're gonna be taking out of the paycheck. So that means the, the actual uh, calculation is a bit more difficult, a lot more difficult so we're going to be decreasing the checking account, but not by the gross check, but by the net check. And then on the income statement, if I go over to the income statement, the impact on the income statement in general would be some kind of expense account, which would be the gross amount, not the net amount for payroll expense. And then the difference between those two would be on the balance sheet, which would be a liability account down here, which would be a payroll liability which would include the federal taxes, which would be federal uh, income tax for the employee, not us, the employer, social security and Medicare. And then we would also have our employer taxes matching social security and Medicare that we would have to pay increase in the liability. The other side of that go into the income statement as uh, payroll taxes oftentimes uh, on this side. So it's a fairly complex transaction when you record the transactions in terms of all the accounts that are gonna be impacted just from a financial transaction, meaning what's the impact on the financial statements, then you also have to add up the reporting requirements, which means we have to track that information on a year to date basis, as well as a basis for the current paycheck as we process the payroll, which can start to add up to a lot of data, even for just a few employees. So for example, it might look something like this if you were looking at like a payroll ledger, ledger or register. This is similar to kind of types of reports that might be generated either internally if you process within QuickBooks or externally if you were to get the process done for you by an external provider like an ADP or a Paychex. So let's just imagine we had a very simplified payroll here where we just have the two employees and let's say the first one earned uh, on the first pay that they had 4,583. And then we're gonna say that we're gonna reduce from their pay just what's mandatory, the mandatory withholdings, not getting into voluntary withholdings like 401k plans or health health insurance or whatnot. We're gonna say that their, their federal income tax, FIT, not ours, not the companies, the employees that we have to withhold based on the information they gave us from the W-4, we're just gonna say is 720. And that, that calculation in and of itself is complex because it's trying to feed in to the 
the individual income tax, which is a progressive tax system and therefore not easy to calculate. It's not a flat tax. I can just not, I can't just multiply it times a rate. I have to take into consideration all these other kind of things to try to get that number correct. So that is one place where whoever you're paying to do the payroll is making their money because that's not an easy thing. You gotta look at tables and whatnot. And then you got social security and Medicare that are gonna be pulled out. These are more of a flat tax. And uh, so that one, those two should be a little bit easier to calculate as well. These might not be the exact numbers here, but just to give it an example. And then the net check is gonna be the gross pay minus the FIT, social security and Medicare. So from a bank feed standpoint, what's gonna to happen to the bank when I process the payroll? If I was to process it, for example, within QuickBooks, then you're gonna see the, the bank's gonna get hit by that 3,572 for that check when you process the payroll. And then if you see the second one, you're saying, okay, what about this second employee? She earned 2,400, her federal income tax is 380, social security 149, the Medicare is 35, the net check then is the 2,400 minus the FIT, Social Security and Medicare. The net check that's gonna hit the bank feeds, come through to the bank feeds that we're gonna see is 1,856. Even though they earned 4,583 and 2,400 respectively. And then you can think about this in aggregate, which would mean the total of our two employees would be this amount minus the total FIT, the total Social Security, the total Medicare, then you can calculate the net check by adding it up this way, or you could calculate it the same way. So we can kind of think from a financial standpoint about the impact on the financial statements as if all of our employees were in essence one employee and look at basically a journal entry that would be the impact on the financial statements. So that's the couple ways that we can look at this. What's gonna to happen to the financial statements for this check you should have an increase in, in the expense account of 4,583 for what they earned. You should have an increase in the liability account for the sum of these 1,011 for payroll taxes payable for that employee. And then the net check decreased to cash 3,572 in this example. For Erica, the expense would be 2,400 what was earned. The payable would go up our liability 544 net check decrease to cash of the 1,856. And the, you can think about this in gross or in total, what would happen, you would have a decrease, or I'm sorry, an increase to the expense account in total of 6,983. The payable would go up by 1,554 and the net check would be the difference between the gross pay minus, gross pay minus the taxes. On top of that, you're gonna to have to pay Social Security and Medicare and most and FI uh, FUTA, federal unemployment tax as well. So that would typically be in a simplified you know, format. We're not gonna include federal unemployment tax, for example. We would have to match, in other words, these two. That then would increase a expense account, which would be a liability account. And the other side would be going to uh, the, the payroll tax expense. So although these are Social Security and Medicare and these are Social Security and Medicare, you, gen you generally think of them as two different expense accounts. These two are included in the total you know, uh, expenses that are included in the expense account of the earnings of the employee wages or salary or whatever. And this one would be the payroll taxes because these are the taxes we have to pay over and above the gross pay. That's the, that's the general idea of uh, the payroll. So how do the bank feeds fit into that? Well, if you're entering this into the system using QuickBooks, you can't just be on a cash basis system because when I process the payroll, it's gonna do this whole transaction for us. It's gonna record the accrual component. It's gonna record the liability of this amount, 1554 uh, plus the liability here, and it's gonna record the related uh, expense accounts and it's going to do it properly in essence on an uh, accrual component. We're going to see that these checks are cleared and therefore when I go over to my bank feed transaction and I see it clearing the bank feed in the first tab then I'll see these these payroll checks come through for example and let's just pretend like let's just pretend like this was a payroll check then then 
th this would come through and that would basically be the net check. I wouldn't be adding it to the system then with the bank feeds. I wouldn't be reliant on the bank feeds, but rather I would be using that matching component to match up the bank feed to what has actually happened when I processed the payroll. So we wouldn't be reliant on the bank feeds and we would be using kind of an, some kind of basically accrual type of system. So the other system you might use, you might say, okay, well, what if I have somebody else do, do, my, do my payroll, not within QuickBooks? I wanna be on a cash basis system. I don't even wanna deal with payroll. I wanna be a bookkeeper that just basically cranks out everything in an automated fashion and work with other people to do things like processing the payroll, like an ADP or a paychex, and then work with an accountant, they can kind of pull everything together at the end of the period. So if that was the case, then you might work with somebody else and they would then provide you periodically like a register that would tell you what they actually did when they processed the payroll. You would still see the net checks that would come out of the actual account within QuickBooks with the bank feeds, but the detail of the gross pay and the FIT would not be in your system because you didn't process it within QuickBooks unless you integrated the systems in some way, shape or form. But you might not need all that detail in your system in QuickBooks because ADP or whoever else, whoever's the one that's doing the payroll is the one that's gonna deal with all that other human resources type of stuff. Our job as the bookkeeper is to get the financial statements correct for reporting purposes for tax and whatnot in, in that type of system. So I could take their report, for example, periodically and enter it into the system using basically journal entries. And I could still be in the process of basically entering this into the system, uh, pot, you know, check by check, which would be gross, the expense goes up by this, liability goes up, and then the net income and still do, the, do it on an accrual type of basis. And, and then if I was to do that, I would still have to match out the bank feeds over here. Now the other system, you might say, well, why don't I just do a cash system? Why don't I just wait till it clears the bank? And so you'll have some timing differences if you were to do that, but it's possible if you have someone outside doing, doing the actual payroll and basically doing all the human resources for you, doing the 941s to 940 and whatnot, you might just say, hey, I'm just gonna wait till this net check clears the bank. And when it clears the bank, I'm just gonna record it as payroll expense, just like it would be a normal payroll expense, which is wrong from an accrual standpoint, because really we should have the 4,500 as the expense. And then we've got these liabilities that we withheld, which we're gonna pay in the future. But these liabilities that we withheld, we are going to pay at some point in time. And when we do pay those, then they're gonna, they're gonna, we're gonna see them in our account as something that cleared the checking account. And we'll be able to add them to our system when, when they actually are paid. So there could be a timing difference. We'd we'll, move away from a, a strict uh, accrual basis and just say, I'm just gonna record whatever the net check is when it comes through as payroll expense. And then I'm gonna recognize that when I actually pay off the payroll liabilities in the future, I'll see them come through with the bank feeds. I'm not gonna worry about me handling the timing of doing that and whatever. I'm gonna let you know whoever my payroll company is do that. When we actually pay those off, I'm gonna see them clear on the bank feeds and I'll simply record them also as an expense, possibly just payroll expense again, which means I'm gonna have one account for the payroll expense and one account that's gonna include the, the payroll taxes as well in one expense account. And so, and then at the end of the period, possibly the end of the year or, or the end of the month for a small company, most likely the end of the year, you can ask your accountant to say, hey, look, here's my information from my external payroll provider. Here are the reports that I have. I've recorded everything on a cash basis as they have cleared the bank. I've recorded everything that's payroll related to a payroll expense. I would like you to now take the reports from whoever my payroll provider is and the 941s, the 940, the W2s that should all be provided by your payroll provider and then reconcile whatever you need to do in my system to make it on whatever kind of basis it needs to be as of this point in time. Do the adjusting entry, in other words, to make the payroll expense correct. If you need to break out the payroll taxes versus the, the wages expense, break that out according to the whatever the reports say for my payroll provider. And then if there's some liabilities that are still due at this point in time that I have not yet paid, then do the adjusting entry and put those in place 
as well. And again, you might think that that's a lot of work to be dependent on the, on the accountant for, but a lot of times the accountants have to do that anyways because the payroll doesn't line up. The, the, the cutoff date for the payroll is not gonna line up to the cutoff date for the end of the year or the month. And so they often have to reverse some of the stuff or do some adjusting entry anyways. So it's sometimes it's actually easier if you can just tell them exactly what you're doing. As long as you know exactly what you're doing, you can you could say you can make the adjustment on a periodic basis. So that's another method you might do. If you have a good system that you're working with an external provider that's doing the payroll, handling the W-2s, the 940, the 941s, that you're gonna have to pay for anyways because QuickBooks is gonna cost money too. So the question is how much does it cost QuickBooks versus the external reporter? Then you might record your information, everything that comes through the bank, the net check as basically one payroll expense, for example. And then when you pay the liabilities, those will come through. I'll record those as one payroll expense. I will ask my CPA or tax preparer at the end of the year to take the reports from the ADP or paychecks or whoever my payroll provider is and, and note that I recorded everything on a cash basis and do the adjusting entry at that point in time, making the financial statements correct for whatever needs we have, whether that be taxes or whether that be external reporting purposes at that point in time. So that could work for basically small companies. That could be a system that could be useful for uh, bookkeepers. And if a bookkeeper can create a network between themselves the external payroll provider that they trust and, and understands what the, what's going on with the, your system and a CPA firm that can do the adjusting entries, knows how to basically do these adjusting entries, that could be a good network to kind of uh, put together.